Welcome guys, before us we have question 10 from section B of mathematics paper 2 for the 2023 for the internals. Now this question is coming from the cubic function. Now we are dealing with a question that has 12 marks. Right, so let's read through the question. The values of x and y are connected by the equation. So the equation is uh, y is equal to x raised to the power 3 minus 9x plus 5. So this is our original equation because this equation is representing the values that we have in the table. Some of the corresponding values of x and y are given in the table below. Now, Roman number one, we want to calculate the value of Q. So where is Q? Q is here. So as you can see, Q is in the Y axis. And because of that, the Q must be re replaced where there is Y. So this is where we are going to put our Q. Then what number are we supposed to put where X is? So you need to look at the position of Q. Then on top of Q, the number above represents the x that is corresponding with the y which is denoted by q. So in our case we are saying the x is negative 2 raised to the power 3 minus 9 times negative 2 plus 5. Now uh, if you raise a negative number to the power 3 the sign should not change. So the negative will stay like that. Then we will have 2 times 2 times 2. We are going to have 8. So here we are going to have 8. So what I mean is that the negative will not change. Let's say we have negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. We know that this negative times this negative will give us a positive. This positive times this negative, our final answer will be negative. Then here we have negative 9 times negative 2 giving us positive. 18 plus 5. So we can uh, subtract this part. 18 minus 8 is 10 plus 5. So the value of y, I mean this is q, the value of q is equal to 15. So we've done the first question. Now we move on to Roman number 2. Using a scale of 2 centimeters represent one unit on the x-axis. So for the x-axis, the range is from negative 4 up to positive 4. And 2 centimeters represent 5 units on the y-axis. So the range for the y-axis negative 5 up to positive 20. So we need to make the x-y plane, but we need to make sure that we plan because the numbers that we are given must fit on our graph paper. So let's draw the xy plane. Right, so remember in the x-axis, the range is negative 4 up to positive 4. So if this is our origin, and we are told 2 centimeters, so this is our 2 centimeters, it represents 1 unit, so we need to put a 1. Another 2 centimeters, we add a 1, so this is our 2, 3, so this is our 4. So we do the same to the left side, it's negative 1. 2 centimeters will give us negative 2, another 2 centimeters, negative 3, 2 centimeters, negative 4. Then from there, in the y-axis, we are told it's negative 20 up to, sorry, should be 10 up to positive 20. So the first 2 centimeters we are told to 
represent five units so you need to put a five units so here 10 units 15 units then this is where our 20 units will be if you want we can reach up to 25 so the key is as long as we have reached the last number according to the range so negative 5 make 10 so the key is we reach uh, negative 10 now before we start plotting it's very important to know what these smaller boxes represents in each axis so i'm going to begin with uh, x axis so to to know under the x axis we need to look at what each two centimeter represents so that we are told each two centimeters represents a one unit so i'm going to say one divided by always 10. so if you divide one divided by 10 is 0 0.1 which simply means that these smaller boxes in the x-axis represents a 0 0.1. What of the y? So for the y, it's 5 units divided by 10, giving us 0 0.5. So each smaller box in the y-axis represents a 0 0.5. Now let's go back to the table. So the first... A pair of coordinates is negative 3.5 is negative 3.5 comma negative 6.4 so 3.5 is between negative 4 and negative 3 so 1 2 3 4 5 then we are told 6.4 so 5 6.4 is somewhere here next point so the next point is negative 3 comma 5 make 3 comma 5 so in the x-axis negative 3 comma 5 is here let's look at the next point is negative 2 comma 15 negative 2 comma 15 so negative 2 comma 15 is here from there we have negative 1 comma 13 negative 1 comma 13 so two boxes makes one in the y-axis so 12 11 12 13 is here right then we have 0 comma 5 0 comma 5 so since the x is 0 comma 5 it's here from there what else do we have 1 comma negative 3 so the x is 1 in the y negative 3 so 1 2 3 then from there what do we have 2 comma negative 5 so 2 comma negative 5 is here. Then 2.5 comma 1.9. Negative 1.9. So 2.5 is between 2 and 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2.5 comma 1.9. So this is somewhere here. Then we have 3 comma 5, 3 comma 5 is here. Then 3.5 comma 16.4, 3.5 comma 16.4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3.5 comma 16.4. So the remaining part is now to draw our curve. So, but when drawing, you need to make sure that 
you draw a smooth curve. So this is it. y is equal to x raised to the power 3 minus 9x plus 5. So the first part is done. We move on to question Roman number 2. Use your graph to find the solutions of the equations. So the first one is this equation. Now let's look at this equation carefully. So we have x raised to the power 3 minus 9x plus 5 is equal to 0. Now if you get this part and compare this part to the original equation that we are given from the equation, this equation, we can see that this part is exactly as this part. So where there is this, you replace with y. Because you know that y is equal to this, so it's same as it, y is equal to 0. y is equal to 0 represents the x-axis. So we need to look at where our graph is cutting the x-axis. So it's at this point and this point. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So Roman number 3, the first value of x is e. 0 0.5 then in the second value of x is 2.1234567 so 2.6 right let's check for the other one so the other one we are given 3 i mean x raised to the power 3 minus 9x plus c 5 is equal to negative 3x plus 6. So let's compare if this part is the same as the original equation. So we can see that we have the same. So if this is the same, let's put y. y is equal to negative 3x plus 6. So we have formed a linear equation. So how do we solve the linear equation? So we're going to say y is equal to negative 3x plus 6. So step number one, I'm going to find the y-intercept by substituting where there is x, 0. So you start with 0. So y is equal to negative 3 times 0 plus 6, which is we know that negative 3 times 0 is 0 plus 6, y is equal to 6. So in case where you get a number that is out of the range from the given x, y plane, then you need to change from 0, you try 1, negative 1, until it gives you numbers that are within the range. So let's find now x, since y is 6, let's find the x. So y is equal to negative 3x plus 6. So since we want to find the x intercept, where there is y, we put 0 minus 3x plus 6. So I'm going to shift my negative 6 to the left side, giving us 3x is equal to 6 over 3 over 3. So x is equal to 2. So my y is 6, my x is 2. So I need to draw a line. In the x, it will pass through 2, since the x intercept is 2. In the y, it will pass through 6. So, this is the, the line that we, we want. So, make sure you use a rule. Right, so step number one, we are getting the values from where the straight line is cutting the curve. So this is my first value according to my graph. The second one will be here. Then my third one is here. So this was 3a, now 3b, the first value of x is equal to, this is negative 1.8, 
Then the other x value is here. 0 0.123 negative 0 0.3. The other x value is here. 2.1234. So x is equal to 2.4. So this is where, how you are supposed to solve a question like this one. So now let's look at the last question. So the last question is from the topic of calculus. And we are given the definite integral. How do we know that this is a definite integral? Because we are given limit. So we have limits negative 1 up to 2. Then 3x squared minus 2x raised to the power 1 plus 1 of dx. So if you are not given the power, it simply means the power is 1. So I'm going to integrate. So to integrate simply means we are finding the ant derivative, the opposite of differential. Differential is found by subtracting a 1, but integration, you add a 1 divided by the same result. Minus 2 times raise, x raised to the power 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1. So what happens if you have a constant number? So you just say 1 times x, which is x. Then you're evaluating from negative 1 to 2. So I can simplify the first part is 3 over 3 multiplied by 3x raised to the power 3 minus 2 over 2 times x squared plus x evaluating from negative 1 to 2. So I can cancel these. So x raised to the power 3 minus x raised to the power 2 plus x evaluating from negative 1 to 2. So if we were to find the indefinite integral, this is our final answer. We just need to add a c. Now, since it's definite integral, I'm going to write these two brackets. So the first bracket will carry the upper limit, which is 2 minus the other bracket, the lower limit. But inside each bracket, you need to have the exact integrated function, so which is x raised to the power 3 minus x squared plus x, x raised to the power 3 minus x squared plus x. So which simply means that here, x is equal to 2. Here, x is equal to negative 1. So while there is x, I'm going to put 2 raised to the power 3 minus 2 squared plus 2. Then uh, negative 1 raised to the power 3 minus negative 1 squared plus negative 1. So 2 raised to the power 3 is 8. 2 raised to the power 2 is 4 plus 2 minus negative 1 raised to the power 3 is negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, which is just negative 1. Here, negative 1 squared is positive. 1 times this negative is negative. Positive times negative is negative 1. So here, 8 minus 4 is 4 plus 2. Then here we're going to have negative 3. Same signs we are supposed to add. 4 plus 2 will give us 6. Negative times negative is plus 3. So the final answer is just C. 9 units squared. So the reason why we are saying it's squared, this represents the area. So as you can see, it's very simple. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.